Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Ida Lupino was one of Hollywood's first female directors. She was a pioneering creative force in Hollywood from the 1930s through the 1970s. Lupino was one of the first actresses to make her transition to behind-camera roles, becoming one of the only prominent female directors during the golden age of Hollywood. Why was Ida Lupino never recognised as a female director? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Ida Lupino, trailblazing actor, director, producer and screenwriter. During her peak, she was a film star and became one of the first female directors in movies and television. She directed several motion pictures and over 100 episodes of television programs. She dealt with the male hierarchy in Hollywood and overcame the rampant chauvinism first producing independent films with her second husband, Collier Young. She eventually became a top director of films that favoured a unique touch in film noir. By the 1960s, she had become a prolific television director. We would talk about Ida Lupino as one of the greats, even if she never directed any movies. She was an excellent and versatile performer, and she communicated a special kind of self-sufficiency on screen, even when the part as written called for a plot-driving arm ornament. She was lovely to look at, and her initial success in Hollywood was greatly dependent upon her beauty, but she quickly won the admiration of her directors. Even notorious tough guys like Raoul Walsh even as she pushed back against bad scripts. She spent a lot of time on suspension for refusing bad parts or rewriting her lines to fit her conception of the character. She had the beauty and talent of the most captivating star, the unwavering determination of the most ambitious producer, and the fervent creative vision of the most gifted director. Ida Lupino could fall into any number of categories, yet with a significance that remains almost immeasurable. Perhaps the one word best describing this groundbreaking artist is simply this. She was a pioneer. But Ida Lupino has not been treated well by history. She was the niece of the English music hall legend Lupino Lane, who later became a silent movie comedy star. Born February 4th, 1918 in South London, Lupino belonged to a revered family of entertainers. In the weeks leading up to her birth during the First World War, German triplanes had rained bombs down on the city, killing 68. The terror from above had yielded to dense fog, punctured by a thunderstorm, a dramatic beginning for a future world-class actress. Her mother, actress Connie O'Shea, also known as Connie Emerald, and her father, Stanley Lupino, were part of an ancestral dynasty of performers. The success of Lupino's father, grandfather and uncles had resulted in family friendship with such literary figures as Charles Dickens and Peter Pan creator J. M. Barrie, while Edward VII, son of Britain's long-seated Queen Victoria, had dubbed the Lupino clan the Royal Family of Grease Paint. Young Ida was accordingly encouraged to take the stage during her earliest years. The family was able to relocate from a modest home in Dulwich to a Tudor mansion in Streatham, she grew up in a home full of theatrical memorabilia and sang her first songs with her younger sister and parents around the family piano. She'd been prepped for a life in the limelight since she was old enough to read, so her family got her learning lines. When she was eight years old, her parents departed for a tour of the United States and engagements on Broadway. In addition to writing her first play at the age of seven, she toured with a travelling theatre company, who steeped in the works of Shakespeare and enrolled in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. She then found her way into the British film industry, making her first appearance in The Love Race, which also featured her father and was directed by her uncle. A German director visiting the set had taken note of her attractiveness and offered her a role in his upcoming production and later cutting her one scene because Lupino was prettier than his leading lady. In 1932, her mother brought Ida with her to an audition, and Ida got the part her mother wanted. The picture was her first affair. She took leading an entire film in her stride. No big deal. What was a big deal was the role Ida was playing. 
You see, very underage Ida was playing a nymphomaniac who spent her time chasing men while wearing not a great deal. Though she starred alongside the likes of Ivan Novello, generally insignificant British features followed before Lupino arrived in Hollywood, where she acted in more than a dozen modest productions throughout the 1930s. Over the next few years, she matured into a young woman of remarkable beauty, particularised by alabaster skin and piercing blue eyes. She was just 14 when she became a Hollywood starlet. If you're thinking that's kind of a lot for a teen, you'd be surprised. Fast forward a few years and Ida, now barely out of tweendom, was headstrong and self-assured, unsurprising given that her acting had been helping pay her family's bills for years. Her films included Peter Ibbots and Anything Goes and William Wellman's The Light That Failed, for which she finally garnered attention more for her impressive abilities than for her manufactured platinum blonde image. Her performances established her as a three-dimensional human being, and even in lesser films she brings more to the part than was likely intended or expected. Audiences knew they could expect honesty from her, and she held up her end of the deal. The 1940s saw an expansion of Lupino's range and her public recognition, though she often appeared as a supplementary character alongside some of Hollywood's biggest male actors. They drive by night with George Raft and Humphrey Bogart, the Sea Wolf with Edward G. Robinson and John Garfield. She soon assumed more significant narrative prominence, as in Ladies in Retirement, which co-starred Louis Hayward, her husband since 1938, and The Hard Way, where the depths of her ruthless performance earned her a New York Film Critics Award for Best Actress. But while Lupino realised growing stardom and an increased salary, she was also becoming disenchanted with the lacklustre roles sent her way. She often resisted Warner Brothers' head Jack Warner and refused to act in films beneath her dignity, a steadfast, confident decision that more than once landed her on suspension. Dramas and thrillers made up most of Lupino's work during this time, and her characters were frequently of an analogous nature. As noted by critic Kristen Lopez, Lupino's turn in the noirish Out of the Fog was the apotheosis of the actress's trapped characters. Where the sea wolf lets Lupino's character escape with the opportunity to find love and domesticity, Lupino's Stella Goodwin in Out of the Fog kicks off a string of women Lupino played who were denied that opportunity. She did not want to be an actress, composing and writing were her major interests. Ida branched out into film directing and producing in 1949, becoming one of two women to enter the male-dominated field. In the 1950s, Lupino, now an American citizen, entered her most influential period of filmmaking. She and her second husband, Columbia executive Collier Young, founded in 1949 Emerald Pictures, named after Lupino's mother. Soon renamed The Filmmakers, this independent company strove to highlight social issues, sometimes controversial subject matter, and unconventional stories seldom told by the larger studios. While her feature films were primarily aimed at female audiences, on the television she quickly became known for her skill at directing westerns, mysteries and detective dramas shows aimed at male viewers and many featuring all-male casts. No one ever asked me to direct a love story, she said. They first helped fund Elmer Clifton's The Judge, the success of which led to the development of Not Wanted, a courageous and prescient film about an unwed mother. Lupino assumed authority over budgeting, the screenplay and, after its director, also Clifton, had a heart attack, direction of the film itself though Clifton still received the credit. She had long been observant of the directors with whom she worked, learning by example and planning for herself all the while, and in 1950 Lupino made her official directorial debut with Never Fear, in which Not Wanted star Sally Forrest plays a young dancer stricken with polio, a disease Lupino herself contracted in 1934. While working on Nicholas Ray's On Dangerous Ground, where she gives a subtly sympathetic performance as an agonised blind woman, the director suffered a nervous breakdown and Lupino stepped behind the camera there as well, also uncredited. Her The Hitchhiker was a gritty male-dominated thriller, 
calling herself the poor man's Betty Davis, while an actress at Warner Brothers, she now referred to herself as a poor man's Don Siegel, and The Bigger Mist was a shrewd, cautious film about a man attempting to live a dual life of marital commitment. She has said that she wanted to make films about bewildered, lost people, and she has perfectly understood the experience of passivity and the social forces that maintain and exploit it. As a director, Lupino made savvy use of sets and commonly shot on location, aligning with her interest in unvarnished realism. She worked quickly on these low-budget features, but managed to achieve instances of compelling visual expression, penetrating compassion, and an intimate sense of existential anguish. Lupino notes critic Michael Barrett focused on characters who have lost their way and don't know what they're doing or where they're going. Thus, she connects with the average viewer's sympathies, not through wish-fulfillment figures, but with people who flounder like we do and become frightened by what happens even as the results of their own decisions. And she was aware of her status in Hollywood. She still recognised as a successful woman who worked within the 50s Hollywood studio system, all while directing, producing, acting and singing. The New York Times added she was celebrated for directing eight provocative and socially relevant feature films and scores of episodes of many long-running television series. The Los Angeles Times reported Lupino famously walked out on a 1,700 a week contract in 1937 because she was fed up with lightweight ingenue parts. The newspaper added she would later abandon another acting contract in the early 1950s to produce, write and direct. But she was sadly a long-term alcoholic and drug abuser that derailed her career. She ended up a recluse who made poor business decisions. She ended up selling a beautiful home in Brentwood and moved to a modest home in the valley. Her third marriage to Howard Duff was quite contentious and ended in a divorce after a long separation. She died a badly forgotten person after living many years as a Norma Desmond type. Struggling with long-term alcoholism, she grew reclusive in retirement, estranging herself even from her adult daughter. Bob Finkel was the producer of the 1972 Academy Awards, where Chaplin was honoured. He asked Lupino to be a presenter. When she arrived at the awards, she was blotto. She was falling down drunk. She had no one with her. She refused to go home, and Bob Finkel was panicking. He didn't want her embarrassing herself or the awards, so he locked Ida in a broom closet. She was snoring on a couch in her dressing room, so he moved her into the closet and locked the door. He actually forgot about her until the show ended. When he finally went to retrieve her, she was still sleeping in the closet. A definite sad end to a remarkable career and a pioneer filmmaker that paved the way for women in cinema. She was never recognised, no honorary awards, no AFI, nada. A crying shame and a tragic conclusion to her life. At the time of her death in 1995, Lupino was only beginning to be re-evaluated as a pioneering female director, as well as a guiding hand in the gestation of American independent cinema. Her career spanned almost five decades, with acting appearances in 59 films, alongside Humphrey Bogart, Olivia de Havilland and Errol Flynn, among others. Her daughter's death in July 1990 hit the former actress hard, and her final years were marked by bouts of depression and assorted illnesses among them a mental deterioration that had first manifested itself as a difficulty remembering her lines on the sets of television shows. Diagnosed with cancer, she suffered a debilitating stroke in 1995 and died in her Burbank home on August 3rd of that year at the age of 77. Cruelly coincident with Lupino's passing was a burgeoning renewal of public interest in her feature film work and her championing among film historians as an important figure in the development of American cinema in the second half of the 20th century. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Ida Lupino? She directed and helped write films on controversial subjects 
including that of illegitimacy.